Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorkong, in which we take the time to go small cap executives after they put out big news. Guys, for those of you who believe, and that's got to be almost everybody now, I don't know anybody who doesn't, in the future of electric vehicles, you're about to find out some information about what makes these batteries work, what problems they're having, and what solutions are needed to potentially open up a $130 billion market by, 20, by 2033. So let's start off with this. In an electric vehicle battery, which is typically a lithium ion battery, there are three main parts you need to know about, the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. Today, we're just gonna talk about the anode, okay? It plays a crucial role in how the battery works. So specifically, it acts like a storage container for lithium ions. So it holds on to them when the battery's charged, it releases them uh, when the battery's being used to power the car. So the flow of lithium ions is what makes the battery work and allows your electric vehicle to run on electric power. Okay, so that's the basic overview. Today, graphite anodes basically dominate the market, but there's a problem there because of this, they've essentially achieved their maximum performance in terms of energy density, and there is enter silicon, and why we're talking to HBQ silicon. Silicon-based anodes have up to 10 times the energy density of a graphite-based anode. So that's why Porsche, Mercedes and General Motors are betting on silicon anode batteries, but it's not that simple. They're known to suffer from significant degradation during charging and discharging cycles. So it means it doesn't always hold on to the uh, it doesn't always hold on to the charge. Call it leaks, and it's a problem that has to be solved. That's where HPQ Silicon enters because their affiliate company Novasium has acquired patents for improving the performance of anode materials. I'm glad we had that, that intro, otherwise you wouldn't have understood the headline. Bernard, welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so hopefully I've accurately, you know, in a summary yeah. form, captured the essence of the anode market, right? And the and the and the foundational shaking that's potentially going on there. Um where did this come from with everything that's going on at HPQ? Where well, did this come from in terms of Novasium and, and why is HPQ even involved? I got to ask because it's Novasium that's acquired the patents. Okay, well, um, well, we'll go from the beginning. We are a founding member of Novasium. We are also a large founder, uh, funder of Novasium. So, as part of the, as I, as, as written in a press release, as part of the um, the original foundation art, uh, agreement, HPQ has a the worldwide licensing right of all the patents of Navasio. So that's that's really where we interject into it. We also interject in a different thing. Uh, this does not come out of the vacuum. This not comes out of nowhere. Um, originally, I think I, I probably even mentioned in the press release that we were more interested who regard those patents for the supercapacitor. But for the last eight, 16 months, yeah, about, about 16 months, uh, Novasium has been doing a lot of the R&D for us with regard to um, how do we use silicone into anode, okay? It's not as simple as, uh, you know, getting 3N silicone, out of 3N silicone, making 3N silicone like we do with the QRR is just a starting block. There is about a series of additional steps you do to convert that silicone into a silicone, a silicone that can be used in battery material. Uh, so, you know, Levasem has been doing a lot of work understanding the entire value chain. And as we were looking and testing, you know, we've said it, we, we, we've sent material, we've built material, uh, for SI uh, silicone anode battery materials, so, so we have we have a, we have a great depth of understanding what's going there at Novasium, and at one point the discussion became, oh, we also own those patents, which basically regards, and I'm going to be speaking as a layman because I'm not the scientist here. Um, it's basically a surface, yeah, it's basically a surface treatment you can do to the material that will improve the efficiency of the battery. Now, the idea for us to use it when we were looking for our material, okay, was if you put it on the SI battery and all material that we're developing, it will improve the efficiency. And, and so it will improve it in two ways. 
And preliminary results came out to be very, very promising. Okay. We didn't bother. We we're not bothering yet to show quantitative de details. Basically, people that know and understand know that, you know, it's, it's, it is something very, very promising moving forward. So we're, we're working on this. We're doing that development for, for all that we're doing, the silicone anode for battery material. But lo and behold, when we were doing those tests, we also decided to test um, to test uh, battery material, anode material that did not contain any silicone to see if it would also generate um, improved results. And yes, preliminary feedback we got was, yes, it does that. Now, you know, there's still going to be a lot of R&D work and all those issues. But as you know, uh, HPQ has signed a lot of NDAs with different battery manufacturers, as opposed to in fume silica, where I, I talk about every one of them in batteries. I don't really bother anymore. But what happens is when we have update discussion, brainstorming session with, with those guys, um, we were very surprised. We were in the middle of a discussion with a big EV manufacturer, and the guys in Novation were explaining the surface treatment, what you can do, and you you could you could, you could almost see the reaction of the guy says, "Oh, this is something really of, really of interest." So that started to that seems, trickle our fancies. That's interesting because was one of, uh, what, what I want to ask you was the race is on for silicon anodes because we're talking about three major in my intro three major car manufacturers mm -hmm. who believe in it, and obviously they're not going to just wait around for George Com silicon and HPQ silicon. So, mm -hmm. you know, how you talk about, you've seen reaction already from some people. Uh, what's yeah, but the, but, but, what's but, the competitive but, but, landscape but, but, like out there for you, Bernard? What's the competitive landscape? Uh, how many George Com silicons are out there that are trying to do the same thing? Well, it depends how you define George Com silicone. Okay. If you're defining George Com silicone as somebody that's working on silicone product to make battery material, which basically is trying to source them in different ways, um, there's probably a hundred if not thousand companies doing this. If you're talking about one that can have a fully integrated um, process from the silicone all the way to the battery, there's only one, that's us. So it really depends where we fit. That's what differentiates us because what we've learned from our discussion with battery manufacturer is consistency for them is much more important than price. It's really a question of consistency of the material. Now, if you buy a batch of within a batch of a product, you will get a material within a quality parameters. Okay, that will mean that'll be this this big. Okay. Well, this is too wide for the, this is really too wide for the battery guys. They want something very, very thin. The only way you can have something very, very thin is if you have dedicated entire line of production. Now, for my competitor, that's an almost an impossible task because they're going bigger, bigger plants to make the, the raw material, and then they just convert it. So they'll just be, there'll be too much material out of spec to make it, to make it work. We, on the other hand, can really work with different, different part, counterpart to design a complete line of production and be basically be ring fence within it. That's always been the business strategy of HPQ. So I'm not... Uh, HPQ with the QRR, where we're doing the battery, we're not going head to head with the, the big boys. We're going alone in the niche markets, which they can't really compete. Well, what would be a niche market? Because, okay, just educate me here. I thought electric vehicle batteries are electric vehicle batteries. Um, no, it's not the what, no. Every electric battery has its own recipe. Okay. Okay. And so the, educate us on that because I didn't know that. It's first it's time it's, it. it's it's literally everybody's going to have their own secret recipe, secret sauce from the electrolyte to the anode to the cathode, how it comes into it. What happens is the moment you you start making it, okay, they start making it. They don't want that many things to change, so they get with a very tight kaya chow. Okay. Uh, it's the French word, basically, basically, you know, their their demands for materials are very very strict. Now, the advantage of what we're talking about for the entire industry is, in this case, there is a probability that just doing the surface treatment on traditional material, okay, can improve a bit the batteries that are already in the market. 
as opposed to silicone, you will have to go from the beginning all the way to the end to manufacture everything to get something ready. So this is why we're perfectly positioned in HPQ. We can, we we could probably license some of the work that comes out with the with the uh, surface treatment, and as we develop our own expertise or our own material, and we could actually partner up or start discussion with other parties and say, okay, we have this specific specification. Can you make the material? And that material will it be improved with the, the, the surface treatment? So there's a lot of options for us, and it's part of what we have to offer to the battery battery space. So the concept of this press release is based on my experience. Usually, these types of press release attract. You know, it's there to educate the shareholders what we're doing, telling them that we are advancing moving forward. But it's also there to attract um, industrial interest from people who's going to say, oh. What's this about this surface treatment? And then, then, then it's going to exchange the, the the ballpark is going to be going. That's that's exactly how we've done it for all our other materials. So this is why we have to issue this press release. I, I thought it was a strategically important one to do now. Well, before we hit record, the one thing I said to you was, who wrote this headline? Because uh, I read a different headline because I kind of recrafted it so when investors hear it, they kind of. Whereas your headline was improving the performance of anode materials with Navascular patented surface treatment process. And right away, I said to you, did you write that headline for the industry? Because that sounds like an industry headline. So clearly now, you know, that's what you're telling everyone. That was meant to put the word out, right? You're planting your flag out there. Well, for two the things. World to know. It's, 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 mean to, it's mean to educate that we have investors or to, you know, to tell investors that we have. So... That simplifies if I come up with another press release which says we've done X, Y, Z, then I don't have to go back and explain why this was important. Um, so it, it's part of a continuous disclosure. Um, if you if you read our presentation on the battery space, we always said we will be testing. Actually, we even say on the thing we're gonna we were gonna test the uh, our proprietary surface treatment on on to see how it works with with material. Now, originally we were doing most of the work for our own material and the discussions are moving along. You got to realize that both with the IRA and the European, uh, they're looking to reshore everything. And in the last week, we all heard that China decided to put export limits on graphite, uh, graphite for batteries. So that's also going to be another catalyst for what we are doing. So if we can make uh, you know, the more you can, the more silicone you can put in an anode of a battery, the less graphite you need. Is that why in your press release you have this massively wide range? You go the market uh, for silicon, the market for silicon anode, anode materials could mm -hmm. be as high as 100, could be as low as $15 billion by 2030 or $130 billion by 2033. That's according to two different sources. Mm -hmm. uh, is that why? Because is that is China the X factor in all this? And that if they no 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 that, that those like those numbers sports. were before were before the the fact that China decided to to cancel. So you know may, maybe in a few weeks somebody's going to come up with different numbers. It's very at this moment it's very difficult to to pin down where it is. But you know what we know is that in China in every one of their batteries and the Chinese are the one that basically are the leaders right now in battery manufacturing. Um, they do put silicone materials. It's about between five to ten percent. the The goal is to increase it, and the goal, you know, there's some goals to go to a hundred percent silicone batteries. Is that going to be feasible or not? I don't know, but it's a good market to be in for what we're doing, and it fits our strategy of going after specialty markets. And you know, if you if you read all our press release, we are advancing in every one of those projects moving forward. Um, sometimes it might not seem to be very, very fast, but we've never been, we've never been, uh, as advanced or, or, or as anything else. So, um, commercialization is always something I like to talk about because mm -hmm. it's one thing for George Com Silicon to say, we've got this great Silicon, but first thing shareholders are always going to ask is, well, does anybody mm -hmm. want it? Is it viable? Is it any good? I don't know. Cause at the end of the day, we don't know at home, you know, how good this may be. So. Your quote, Novasium's new patent surface treatment provides HPQ and Novasium with a unique opportunity to offer solutions tailored to both the short and long-term needs of the battery industry. That's kind of what you covered. Short-term, 
you can uh, code for drag fight, long term, you know, silicon. But then you go on to say, promising preliminary discussions have mm -hmm. already started to take place with entities already under NDA with HPQ mm -hmm. on the potential of this technology. Mm -hmm. um, and given how fast and furious your press release has been coming in 2023 and you've been pretty much on mark, I mean, give or take a little delay here and there, you've been pretty much on mark. That sounds like you're having some pretty, for you, for you of all people to put in a press release, that sounds like that's pretty serious discussion that's probably taking place. This isn't just a, a one phone call, let's have a coffee. You want to expand on that as much as you can? Because I know the shareholders probably would, would, be, would be dying for you to expand on that. Not yet. But I'm pretty sure we'll we'll sit down and have another chat pretty soon about this. No, let, let me expand a bit, though, basically. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit too excited about this in the sense that... pretty good to me. It sounded pretty good to you. But I'll I'll just say, as I, as I explained prior, we were we were just having like one of those regular catch-up moment with, with the companies we have under NDA. And the interest was, the interest was there. Now, um... With regard to, to the other things, yeah, there, there are things that there are things that are advancing in that regard. Um, and you know, if if you look at my pattern of doing press release, I try not to not to issue omnibus press release that cover everything anymore. I did that once. I did issue, I think I have the world record for the longest press release. But remember those days. Yeah, you remember those days. Now, so basically now I like I, I like to try to um bring it down when I can. It's not me that dictates everything, but when I can, basically bringing down in feasible steps. Step number one is to uh, inform the market, the 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 industry, uh, my shareholders that the 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 surface treatment that we have that we mentioned, a we own it. Well, Novasium owns it, but we have the the, the worldwide license, and b there is some interest in that regard for moving forward. So. That that was just what it is. I, it was just saying to people, you know, stand by. There'll be a there'll there'll be a follow up novel. Devil's advocate, Novasium acquired a family of patents. I'm quoting the press release: a family of patents related to the surface treatment of carbon based materials. Mm -hmm. How much testing has to take place uh, with those patents to make sure that at the end of the day you can deliver? You know, no, a, a real it, solution. It, or, is, or is it already already there? No, it's I gonna say this, it's how we you know, as we wrote in the press release, it's how we adapt that process to the specificity of what we're doing. And what we said in the press release and what we what we know is that the preliminary results we have gotten are uh, sufficiently exciting enough for us to start talking more about it. Uh, how much percentage it is, you know, we might want some more replicates. We, we, you know, we're not going to taste like a, one series or maybe two series of batch results and say this is the end all or all. all. We, we're probably going to want more uh, sustained series of testing to before before we get so we start uh, delivering those new those new information. Is that the fourth leg to the company? Because we've got QRR. We, is this? the fourth leg now for the company because we've got qrr fume silica clean hydrogen Bad is this way. is this the fourth one you see what i've really learned okay is that the qrr will get its optimum valuation and utilization okay as the service provider for the silicone so is it an independent? I don't think so. It's all interrelated. But what this, what we are doing now is we can take, we will focus more on making silicone battery material. Okay. So that by the time, and I've said that many times, by the time we end up going bigger with the QRR, we will already have the orders. We will already have the, the material. We already will know how much we will get for the material we'll be doing. You have to realize that all the material that we're looking at doing, okay, start with a minimum purity of 3N and maybe 3 to 4N, but 3N is, is, is really the key. So, and, and then there's multiple steps done after that. So we know that the QRR can do that part, which what that gives us, okay, 
is we know from the beginning is we will have a shorter feedstock cost than all my competitors. But having the shortest feedstock at the beginning is not the emergency. It is developing the material because these are long life cycle development for the for the battery space. Okay. Because because once they approve your material, there's no change. So it's going to be for, for a long run, right? So the way to look at this is there's going to be a massive upscale in production in the next seven years in the silicone. And we're just at the beginning of that scaling nice. up. And, yeah. So we're just at the beginning of scaling with the right time. We already got the QRR. We can make the feedstock, which differentiates us from everybody. And now it's just like working the entire up the value chain. Yeah, that makes sense. But this has this been another great press release. I mean, I don't, I don't have any more. Because this is brand new, uh, or relatively brand new, I think I've asked all the questions mm. to get the most out of beyond the press release. But is there something I've left out? Is there something that's part of this that you know we haven't talked about, a nuance that the shareholders should know about? No, it's... it's uh, what shareholders should, should really understand is we're executing on our business plan, Okay. And I understand, and I know we're not supposed to be talking about the market, but this is really a case where the company and the markets are are two different places. And I can understand why uh, where that is because of the general overall market conditions. But what we're offering to the industry is a pathways to have um, greener material. That's going to meet those, those objectives. And that's we haven't talked about this, but that is that is becoming to what I'm learning from discussions I'm having in multiple school of technologies I have is that the carbon footprint of a new industrial process is actually now probably one of the biggest key factor that was come into it. I was fundamentally told by somebody looking at our, our, our QRR technology. He says, Bernard, even if your QRR technologies cuts the cost of making silicone by 50%, okay? If there is no changes to the CO2 emissions related to the manufacturing, we will not be interested in it. Now, in our case, it's a good news because <laughs> that's no, what it is. But you, you it's chop it. But wow, that's that. So even if so, you're you're basically saying even if you get someone's cost by fifty percent, but you can't move the needle on CO2 emissions, it's a no go. That's what I've been told by uh, some, some sources in industry. So, Which is, so that that really puts a dent in the business models of the mega silicon producers. We always talk about the big capex, big mega producers, because they can maybe cut costs by scale, maybe somewhat, a mm -hmm. little bit, uh, but they can't touch. They can't really make a dent on the CO two emission side. So that that, what, that probably puts what? them in further peril and puts you in a in in a further advantage. Well, that puts us in the perfect advantage for the for the for the the um the market that we're looking at, which is the the higher value material, okay? And because it those it is those value material where the CO two content for the end buyer is going to play more and more into it. So, um, as I said, silicone, fume silica, they're all sandwich material. Uh, nobody really cared how it was made, where it came, where it came into it. And now everybody does care how it's made, what's its carbon content, what's all, all those issues come into it. So our timing is, is perfect in every aspect except the market. If we, if, if the market was any, you know, if there was more clarity about the next few months about the market condition, we wouldn't be where we are here. But that doesn't change the fact that we're advancing. That doesn't that doesn't change the fact that we have a value proposition that will attract interest of, of, of significant players moving forward. Well, this isn't the first time you've announced potential commercial interest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in the fume silica side, you mentioned a couple of times now the possibility of uh, commercial offtake agreements or joint ventures or mm -hmm. adopting a technology. Here you talk about you know, some good discussions uh mm -hmm. with somebody that's under nd8 hpq i wish we could find mm -hmm. out who that is but uh so i say that because you're taking care of your part you're taking yeah. care of the company better to have a company executing and a weaker stock market for the short term you know medium term than it is to have a great stock market 
and an empty company that's just kind of, you know, benefiting from higher paper prices, but doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to deliver and sooner or later will collapse. Uh, oh, so I, I think, look, we'd all love to have both, right? What you have now in terms of the company, we've, I think everyone's happy with that, right? Very few mm -hmm. people are unhappy with that. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe the fun, be maybe people like, why can't you make a billion dollar sale today? Cause they don't understand how it works. Um, and we'd also love it if the markets were green, no problems around the world, no geopolitical, no interest rate, but you know, sooner or later that always figures itself out and the good companies survive. So, mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, Bernard. I'm going to say it again. Thank you. Uh, I didn't see this coming. It was great to see it come in. And, uh, and from the answer you said earlier, it's clear to me anyways, I'm just doing George reading between the lines, but it sounds like uh, I'm going to have you back in the not too distant future talking more about this. So until then, thanks for joining us, buddy. Thanks. All right, everybody at home, if you've been watching or listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform, it's HBQ Silicon, Trades in Canada, HBQ in the US, HBQFF. Do your due diligence. If you believe in the future of electric vehicles, the role that anodes are going to play, the role that silicon is going to play in order to, you know, further advance us beyond the graphite limits that we've reached the outer limits of, then do your due diligence and hopefully you like what you see. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey, small cap fam. I hope you loved this interview because more than a dozen people were involved in its production for the sole purpose of making you happy. If so, can you take a moment to support both our awesome guest company and Agoracom? Your engagement means the world to us. First, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up by tapping that like button. It's a small gesture that helps this interview reach even more potential investors to discover today's guest. Second, we would love to hear your feedback on this interview, so please leave a comment below. Be sure to keep it clean, but feel free to poke fun at George. If you loved what you heard on today's video and want to dig into our guest company right away, take a look at the links in the description below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss another great Agora Calm Small Cap video. Thank you so much. We couldn't do any of this without you. Make sure to come back soon.